Now, here we try to understand the entire sequence of events. Let us follow this. A very interesting diagram. And if you follow this, we have understood a lot of the mechanisms. Uh, I am sure you understand we are looking at a single cardiomyocyte, single cell. Done? Then number 2, you can see the T tubule there. Number 2, okay. Number 3 is you can see that on the plasma membrane there, you have you can see that red part, red part here. Here the, the message there is that an action potential has arrived or an electrical signal has arrived. Now, who has initiated the signal? We will see later. It has arrived. Okay. Now, as a result of that, if we go here in the plasma membrane, here you have what? DHPR. What do you have there? This is DHPR and this DHPR is along is a voltage gated ion channel and as a result of action potential arriving here, the calcium ion channel has opened and it has allowed the calcium ions to calcium ions to go through. Are you okay so far? Now, as a result of the increase in calcium ion channels, now calcium ions are inside. Okay. They interact with yet another protein system with which we are very familiar and that protein system is sitting on the plasma membrane and that, sits, that protein system is called as RYR2. That we was, that what we talked about then was RYR1. So, what is RYR1? Say that again. Rhinodyne receptor 1, rhinodyne receptor type 1, okay, is the peculiarity of the skeletal muscle. Absorb the message. Hello? Peculiarity of what? So, if I ask you, give me RYR1, you will go to what tissue? Skeletal, skeletal muscle. Okay, and if I say 2, then you will go to what muscle? Cardiac muscle. There is 3 also which you get in several types of tissues including neurons, but we will not bother, bother about at this stage. Now, this, this which is located where? This endoplasmic reticulum, sarcoplasmic reticulum, in its, in its membrane you have this protein system which we call as RYR2 or rhinodyne receptor 2. Okay. Now, this rhinodyne receptor 2 is interesting because, well, I will take you to the skeletal muscle. And in the skeletal muscle, the issue was that there was, that there was DHPR in the plasma membrane and there was RYR1 in the sarcoplasmic reticulum and they were mechanically linked to one another. And if this undergoes big change because of voltage, this also undergoes a change and it allows the flow of calcium ions from the from within the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the cytosol. Okay? That was a mechanical phenomena. Here it is not a mechanical phenomena. Here the phenomena is these calcium ions when they enter into the cytosol, these calcium ions stimulate the RYR2, rhinodyne receptor 2. And as a result of that, the rhinodyne receptor 2 open and then as a result of that, a large number of calcium ions which are stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum are now released into the cytosol. Are you getting the story? Therefore, this phenomena, what phenomena? What phenomena that RY, RYR2, rhinodyne receptor 2, being stimulated by calcium ions? And what do they, what is the response? Release of more calcium ions. Calcium induced calcium release. What did I say? Say that again. Say that again. CICR. What is it? CICR. Okay, so so uh, so first calcium is coming from where outside, second calcium is coming from where sarcoplasmic reticulum, and and this huge amount of calcium now will go where it's now available to it's it's now available to the troponin. Hello, it will go to there is troponin there, and the troponin there are three subunits. One of them has a binding site for calcium. It will bind to the calcium. It will take. It will pull the tropomycin uh, uh, away. On the G protein, there is a site. Actin actin mycin interaction will happen, and uh, and uh, and uh, sliding will happen, and the muscle will contract. Good so far. Now, how how? Uh, no, but you see, you have to you have to. Uh, the heartbeat has to happen within a period of 0.8 second. Well, heartbeat 72 times in a minute. So each each heartbeat has about how much time? 0.8 seconds. How much it is less than a second? 0.8 second. If your if your pulse rate is 60, then your each pulse is taking one second. Am I done there? Right. So here we have the uh, so this uh, uh, this this calcium is being uh, pumped back. Okay. How it is being pumped back? Because again in the sarcoplasmic, whether you are here or here in the plasma membrane, we have we have what calcium pump? Calcium pump. What is the calcium pump? It is. Uh, it's an ATP, it's an ATP, ATP driven system, okay, which will uh, take the calcium ions and then they, the calcium ions are taken into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. You know something? 
You see, keeping keeping ion as an ion. Okay, I want to keep ion as an ion. Is there a choice? I have a choice. I'll tell you, ion as an ion. So I have I have a lot of ions here. How much? Ten raised to the power of minus five. Okay, and I have much less here. Ten raised to the power of minus seven. Hundred fold. Are you with me? Hundred fold. Hundred fold. If I keep everything in the ion form, okay, there will be a certain there will be a certain load on the plasma membrane. Okay, it's ion. Okay, I mean after all, after all, everything has a limit. How much can you store? Okay. So the nature has come up with a beautiful solution. Can you think of that? There's a protein, calcitriptin, okay, which loosely binds the calcium ion. So once you bind the calcium ion, it is not an ion anymore, okay. But the bond is so lo so loose, uh, uh, so weak. The bond is so weak, okay, that uh, any signal comes, calcium ion is re immediately released from the protein molecule and it's made available. Okay, so when it is stored, so the point that I am trying to make is when calcium ions are stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, they are not stored as, of course, some of them are there, but not the whole of it is not stored as, as in the form of calcium ions, but it is stored in what form? It is bound to it is bound to a large protein molecule which is called as calcium or are diff different types of binding molecules are there, and the calcium remains bound to that molecule. Are you okay so far? Now, now. So every time, there is a gush of calcium. Every beat is a gush of calcium because suddenly you have to make huge amount of calcium available for every cross bridge to bind and slide, okay? And, and make sure that the filament slide, you have to have a huge amount of calcium, okay? Now to make my point, I got a very interesting video this is a single, this is in vivo preparation. We have a cell, okay, it's in the medium, okay. And in the cell you have introduced calcium dye. What have you introduced? Calcium, calcium dye. dye and just appreciate the beauty of the system. You got the message there? Suddenly the calcium is becoming you are able to see the calcium because you have a calcium, there is a dye, okay. Uh, that dye lights up whenever the calcium level goes up, okay. So calcium level goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down and this phenomena, what happened to, oh that is finished, okay. Uh, this phenomena is called as what? Uh, calcium spark. Yeah, somebody had a question? Yeah, please go ahead. So, when the cyanodyne receptors are stimulated and calcium is released, from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the calcium which is released also can stimulate the rhinodyne receptor itself because it is activated by the calcium which is coming sure, from the outside. Sure, sure, sure. So this system will always be in the activated state even if your pumps are working because calcium will again activate and there will be a rush of calcium uh, which will be released from your sarcoplasmic reticulum. You are you are forgetting a very interesting point. These channels, all the channels, good you mentioned that point, all the channels, when stimulated to open, they will open. But having opened within a frame of time, they will close. They will close. This is the system of the protein. So it's not a question of channel opening and opening. No, 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 no. The That it should close is a part of the program. That protein system, when it undergoes through a, uh, so there is a huge protein molecule, there is a charge here, there is a charge here, I do not know where and as a result of that, there is a sudden change, there is a sudden change, as a result of that the, uh, the channel has, the, the, the proteins has opened, it is allowing. But that stage is very transient. It will close. But calcium will again activate it. Please. No, no, okay, okay. The, 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 the answer to that question is during this period when the cell is depolarized, the cell cannot respond to another stimulus and this, this period is called as refractory period. It cannot. That protein system is, the protein system has to go through the entire cycle, then only it can be stimulated again. You got the answer now? Okay, you can read about this slide. We talked more about the uh, L type of calcium channel. This is the protein <coughs> system that is the, uh, um, what is that? Now what is that? Crystallography? Okay. All right.
Now comes a very interesting part. For the listen to this, listen to this. For the treatment of several patients who are suffering from a disease like angina pectoris, which means pain in the heart or in the shoulder or in the related area because of the problem in the heart or because of high pressure, okay, high blood pressure, hypertension, okay. One of the established strategies for treatment is called as, I am sure you will immediately appreciate, a class of drugs which we call as calcium antagonist. Are you, uh, please appreciate this point. What do I call it as? Calcium. calcium antagonist. What would they do? The calcium antagonists will act, okay, and they will not allow, you see, they will act on the DHPR, okay, and they will reduce the efficiency of the DHPR so that you do not allow so many and thereby you are reducing the force with which the heart is going to contract. You are easy, as if you are limiting the availability of the calcium to the actin mycin filaments. Are you, called, are, you, are you get the point? Are you, are you getting the point? What do you call that family of drugs? Is say that again. Calcium and calcium antagonist. Calcium antagonist. Remember, remember, there are three very important class of drugs which are used for hypertension in the clinical practice. I am going to introduce all the three to you one by one, and it is and and right now I am introducing to a very interesting class of drugs which you call as what? Calcium. calcium antagonist calcium antagonist please read about this and one such is called as nifedipine nifedipine is a dihydrosiburone calcium is what is what is nifedipine it's a drug it's a drug okay it falls in which category calcium calcium, calcium. say that again loudly calcium calcium, calcium antagonist and it acts on so here we have so this is a this is a dhpr this is a calcium ion channel the nifedipine can act any digest these are all the different types of verapamil these are all different uh, different forms of calcium antagonist that are available that are available in the in, in the market okay uh, look at this uh, this is cardio it is an animation but it shows how the cell uh, undergoes a mechanical change continuously okay all right <coughs> let's move on now yeah sure the plateau uh, period or would they uh, decrease the plateau uh, voltage? Oh, sure, 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 sure. Uh, but, uh, the, these, uh, one thing for sure is that they reduce the strength with which the heart contracts and uh, it has been found that the entire, the, the whole, the, the entire plateau, the, at whatever height it is, okay, it is slightly, it is slightly, it is lowered by about 5 to 10 percent, okay. The time duration is same. Time duration, time duration, same. 